Okay, Mr. Hubbard, the first thing I'd like to ask you, uh, for the record, uh, can you confirm that you were not invited or even approached by BDO to participate in this uh, report? Yes, I can confirm that. Um, difficult question, possibly, but what is your feelings on the motivation, perhaps, for why you were not asked to participate? Well, I mean, you'll understand that this is probably pure um, speculation on, on my part, but uh, my view on it is, is that if I had been invited uh, to comment uh, or answer questions from BDO, I would have given a uh, contradictory explanation and answer to practically every one of the conclusions that's criticised me in the review. Now, the only conclusion I can come to as to why I wasn't asked to give those contradictory explanations was that either because they had been told to or they were under pressure uh, not to speak to me uh, and not to receive and consider the alternative explanations to the conclusions that they came to in their report. Right. Obviously we have not had a formal interview with BDO yet, but uh, myself and the office, scrutiny officer did meet with BDO a couple of days ago, and it was interesting that they actually state that they did uh, request to be able to interview you, but this was blocked, uh, allegedly, by the acting chief officer at the time, which would have been Mr. Walcott. Have you got any thoughts on that? Were you aware of that? I, I wasn't aware of that because I emailed uh, the Home Affairs Minister, uh, Mr. Lamarckon, some weeks ago and asked him why uh, BDO had not interviewed me asked them whose instructions the BDO it was that I should not be interviewed and asked if it was him uh, or, or someone else. Um, Mr. Lamarckon replied to me and said that he had had nothing whatsoever to do uh, with the BDO uh, uh, terms of reference and that um, he uh, had stayed independent and didn't know. So I emailed him back and uh, said to him, well look, you must have delegated this responsibility to someone. Somebody has told BDO uh, if they didn't take it, uh, their own decision. Somebody has told BDO to, um, uh, not to interview me. Um, can you tell me who you delegated the making of the terms of reference to? Mr. Lamarckon emailed me back fairly quickly and said, mm, I, 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 I think possibly I did have something to do with the makeup of the terms of reference, but I'm not absolutely certain. I'll check when I come back from holiday and I'll get back to you. Now, to date, I haven't heard anything from Mr. Lamarckon. Um, my assumption was when I saw some of the comments uh, attributed to uh, Mr. Warcup that he had uh, um, uh, he, he had commissioned this report, then I, I felt that it must have been either Mr. Lamarckon or Mr. Warcup that had told BDO not to approach me, but, but I didn't know that BDO had said that uh, it was in fact Mr. Warcup. Okay. Can I just jump in? I think uh, Deputy Tandia here. Um, the first question is a fairly simple one. If you had been invited to give evidence or, or to be consulted, would you have taken up that opportunity? Yes, I would, absolutely. Okay. Um, I think the second question is, you, you said uh, they were under pressure not to talk to you. Um, where did that pressure come from, in your opinion, or from whom? Well, it, it, it would have come from whoever it was that uh, commissioned the report and gave them the terms of reference. As I said, I believed that it was either Mr. Lamarckon or Mr. Warcup. Um, Mr. Lamarckon totally denied having anything to do with it at the outset, so uh, my feelings then were that it must have been uh, Mr. Warcup. But when Mr. Lamarckon then emailed back to me with his uh, change of opinion and said that he might have had, he would have, I, think, I think the words that he used were, I probably might have had something to do with the setting up of the terms of reference, then uh, again that put the ball back uh, somewhere between Mr. Warcup and Mr. Lamarckon. So my view was that the pressure on BDO, if indeed they hadn't taken the decision themselves, and I couldn't see why they would take the decision themselves not to interview me, that it must have been coming either from the senior officer within the state security police or indeed Mr. Lamarckon. And uh, perhaps the last question for now from me. Um, would there have been anything in the terms of reference as they're drafted which would have precluded BDO from approaching you? Um, I, I don't think I've actually seen the terms of reference, so I, I, I can't answer that, unfortunately. I, I think that what I'm trying to get to, the underlying question is whether uh, somebody was specifically, whether BDO was specifically told not to interview you, or whether they um, simply weren't told or they weren't encouraged to interview you. There's perhaps a difference there. 
Well, I think if they were looking to do a uh, professional job, then I, I think that they would have had to have been told specifically not uh, to interview me. Um, otherwise, I think that they would have been uh, uh, looking to seek an explanation for some of the uh, things that uh, were in their in their report. So I, my belief was that they were specifically told not uh, to interview me. Mr. Harper, Deputy Pittman, again, before I come to my other colleagues, one question arises from what Deputy Teddy has asked you. Could you just clarify for me, you were by then an ordinary member of the public. What authority would the police have had to stop you being interviewed, if any, that you're aware of? They would have had absolutely no authority whatsoever, and this uh, an instruction was given to BDO not to interview me. I would see that as a deliberate attempt to suppress the truth and another attack, uh, uh, another attempt to stop the uh, evidence uh, which supported the evidence of the uh, abuse victims from being a, given a proper airing. Uh, I don't think there was any lawful reason or any lawful authority indeed why uh, BDO should have been told not to interview me. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Harper, Roy Le Hersey here. Um, from your contacts, uh, there still may have been in the steps of Jersey Police. Um, did any of them inform you that the review was indeed underway? No, nobody informed me that BDO were carrying out uh, a report. I knew that uh, Wiltshire were carrying out a discipline inquiry into um, uh, Mr. Power's uh, suspension and the circumstances around that. Um, I picked up somewhere along the line that there had been criticism of the financial management uh, of the uh, um, investigation, but at no time was I ever told by anybody, State of Jersey Police or anybody else, that uh, BDO or any firm of auditors were carrying out um, an, uh, a, a, an investigation into um, uh, the financial management of the inquiry. Okay, thank you. You said you picked it up somewhere along the line. Roy Harris here again, Mr. Harper. Um, can you tell us how you picked it up? Yeah, no, it, it was obviously on the internet somewhere, and um, it, it was um, through media coverage that there had been criticisms. Um, now, I didn't know where that uh, uh, criticism was coming from. Uh, I didn't know what it had been based on, and I picked it up in uh, either one of the blogs or, uh, or, or in uh, some sort of um, newspaper coverage. I'm, I'm not absolutely certain at this stage. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Harper is uh, Deputy Wembley. Uh, just to put it in context, this um, fact that you were not approached, could you um, give us maybe cases of sim comparable cases to this where an investigation is underway, either in Jersey or elsewhere in your previous experience, um, and how that was handled in terms of, uh, if you like, the main witness not being approached? Well, my, uh, the one that I know uh, the, the one that I know of best, which is probably the, the, the best known publicly, was the case of the, um, the Department of Trade and Industry versus um, Maxwell, uh, where a report was uh, being, um, an investigation was carried out into his dealings, and he was the uh, subject of uh, serious criticism uh, in that, and the High Court ruled, and, and I think that uh, my memory uh, not 100% on the, I think it was in, uh, I was able to put it in the uh, written submission, but the, the High Court um, in, in London were very critical and stated that in any sort of investigation uh, such as this where someone uh, is to be uh, criticised in it, they should be A, uh, be made aware of the criticisms, uh, be interviewed and be given an opportunity uh, to comment on those criticisms and to prevent any, uh, present any evidence uh, that he has got. Now this is a clear breach of that and uh, this covered uh, inquiries according to the High Court which were being carried out on behalf of governments or on behalf of public bodies and uh, my view is, is that uh, this was a clear breach uh, of, of, those, uh, of those principles as well as a clear breach of the codes of conduct uh, laid down by the um, uh, uh, accountancy regulation body uh, which states also that uh, all reports being carried out uh, by um, companies of accountants uh, must be seen to be fair and objective and to take all points of view into consideration. Yes, on that last point, um, are you, just to, as a sort of to take that to its end now, um, are you uh, actually doing anything about that? I think you mentioned something about that. 
Thank yes, you. I did. I mean, I, I, I complained uh, to the regulatory uh, body, um, and they came back, and <laughs> despite the fact that um, uh, their own codes of practice uh, state that uh, they will investigate uh, cases where firms of accountants do not comply with their codes of practice, um, they felt that although uh, I had uh, made allegations against BDO that they had uh, failed to meet with these, um, they didn't think that I had proved it beyond all reasonable doubt. Now, I went back to them again and said, well, look, it's not for me to prove beyond reasonable doubt. I have given you the evidence. You're the one who is supposed to investigate it. But they came back then and told me they didn't think it was within their remit.